New tonight, a defender's investigation exposing a dangerous trend of drone drop offs at prisons and it's hitting close to home. Police are investigating a Pineville woman in connection to a drone found near a Virginia prison. Court documents show the drone was carrying drugs and a cell phone. In some cases, inmates with cell phones have made threats to the outside world, even ordered hit jobs. Tonight, our team is learning about new legislation meant to crack down on this problem. NBC Charlotte defender Alex Shabbat is digging into the issue tonight. Well, we've learned from court documents that before that drone ended up near a Virginia prison, it was flying in the sky in our area and then it was transported across state lines. This is not what you typically see fighting war overseas, but it is part of a battle brewing back home. One of the things that we've seen more and more are drone attacks at our prisons. And around prisons, the drones are equipped with a different weapon, cell phones. With the cell phone in their hand, they're no longer uh, virtually incarcerated. Brian Sterling, head of the South Carolina Department of Corrections, says it poses a significant danger for the outside world. They can continue to harass victims. They can look up information on correctional officers, on uh, prosecutors. And tonight, our defenders team learning of a new drone incident tied to North Carolina. Police now investigating a woman at this Pineville apartment complex where a drone was flying last month. A short time later, court documents show the same drone was transported to Buckingham Correctional Center in Virginia. After it crashed, investigators found the drone nearby, carrying a package with marijuana, cocaine, and a cell phone. And we've learned the Pineville woman is the significant other of an inmate at the prison. A cell phone is giving an inmate a weapon of mass destruction. Robert Johnson knows the dangers firsthand. As a former corrections captain, he nearly died after a South Carolina inmate ordered a hit on him. He could call up his buddy, transfer the $6,000 that they paid to shoot me using their cell phone. In another case, a convicted sex offender friended women on Facebook. And I think to society in general, you have to wonder, why can't we control this? Now, South Carolina leaders are trying to take action. The Department of Corrections tells us earlier this year a field test at Broad River Prison showed cell phone jamming technology was effective. But Sterling says there's a U.S. law standing in the way. The FCC, because of a law from 1934, will not allow us to block cell phone signals. You can't interfere with a radio signal, and that's how a cell phone works. Now there's new legislation pending in Congress that would change that. Blocking is what I've been told by the experts is the only thing that'll work. In the meantime, officials say some South Carolina prisons are equipped with drone detecting technology as police continue to follow clues from the drone found in Virginia. Police say charges are pending for the drone incident in Virginia, and they are also looking into other suspects. Alex Shabad, NBC Charlotte.